What do you say, Poco fans? Would you say the Poco X series is back on track? A quick setup for this video. Last year, I spent some time with the Poco X4 Pro 5G, and I had not previously reviewed the X3 Pro. For me, the X4 was a nice collection of premium lifestyle parts with a reasonable compromise of using a more power efficient chip, a more power efficient SOC. I got a number of comments from folks who did not like that compromise to get the 5G. So year over year, we get to the X5 Pro 5G, and most of this experience feels familiar, feels kind of the same. A lot of my review, most of my review from the X4 could be directly lifted for this review here on the X5. The build is spot on. I like these flat sides, the flat screen, especially for using a 120 Hertz OLED. This looks great, and it's backed up by great speakers. I think the power button fingerprint sensor is the most practical unlock method that we can use on a phone today, and Xiaomi sensors are stunningly quick. I adore having a headphone jack, and it's nice getting a dual SIM card slot and an IR blaster. But I'm a bit bummed out that we now don't have an SD card. I'm test driving the 256 gig model of this, which takes some of the storage anxiety, that sting, off of not having upgradable storage, but the way people live out of their phones and now they're shooting higher quality family photos and videos, the memory card is such a handy way to upgrade your phone after you buy it. But the rest is nicely feature complete. The design is really cute. I like this matte finish. The yellow and black model feels really Poco, though I do wish we were still doing the full width camera module just to help reduce some of that table wobble when you set it down flat. I really liked that look on other Poco and Xiaomi phones. The cameras are really similar to last year's phone too. The main sensor is fantastic, support up to 4K 30 frame per second video. The ultra wide is okay. On my model, it's the eight megapixel sensor, which is fine for an easy landscape in good light, but we also have that mediocre macro sensor. You won't get as close, but if you just crop zoom from the main camera, your macro shots will look way better than this tiny little add-on sensor. I kind of wish Poco would just save us the 10 cents per phone manufacturing cost and just go with two more feature complete cameras. The battery is on point, 5,000 milliamp hour capacity with fantastic 67 watt charging, nice and snappy. It's really nice, punching above its price tag. Legit, a phone like this might make for a better upgrade if someone is coming off an older premium phone from the LTE era. My uncle has a Galaxy S9, and I think he would like this better than paying premium cash for a new current Galaxy if we Americans could get this phone here in the United States. And it's all tied together with MIUI now running on version 14, which is running on top of Android 12. MIUI has become one of the best examples of a playful and animated Android skin, and it runs really well on lower powered hardware. But that's the big change this year. The X5 Pro isn't as lower powered, power efficient as the X4 Pro was last year. Adding 5G and an OLED to the X4 meant making a few targeted compromises, and the X4 arrived with a decent chip, the Snapdragon 695. That's really good daily driver fare, but it's not as exciting as the X3 Pro, which had the brilliant Snapdragon 860. The X5 Pro moves us back up the food chain a bit using the Snapdragon 778G. That might not sound as exciting. The 700 series chips are also mid-ranger chips, but I think enthusiasts are gonna like this one. The 778G is built to replace some of the older 800 series chips like the 855 and the 860. It uses newer performance cores at a lower clock speed and stepping down from seven nanometer to six nanometer fabrication. Nearly spec for spec, we're right back to the performance of the 860. This is my threshold for overkill performance. Somewhere around the Snapdragon 855, we started getting compute power that was silly for just covering the basics and 
average consumers. The Poco X5 and this 778G chip return us to that tier of overkill. It's a complicated dance, finding the right parts to combine to reach the right price for the right consumer while trying to move forward with new technology. It's not as easy as keep the old 800 series chip and just staple on some 5Gs, but keep the price the same. We kind of have to manage the flow of those different parts and pieces over generations of phones. The 778G represents that round trip of getting to a higher tier of performance on an SOC built for 5G. It's tough to point to some of those lifestyle differences of the things you do on your phone mostly are like social media, communication, and messaging, but you definitely feel it in gaming. We are getting higher frame rates in the games that I like to play, and more games are able to keep up at full 1080p resolution. I think this helps. I think it helps the X5 return to what Poco enthusiasts liked about the X3. Now, wrapping this all up, every phone manufacturer becomes a story and every new phone becomes a chapter in that story. Part of the burnout some of us creators face is the pure repetition of recreating the chapter from the beginning of the story to explain all of the basics that get us to the current era before we can get on to what's new or different. I'm not trying to short the X5 here when I highlight that it's a lot like the X4 Pro, but when it's this similar, I feel the most important part of the conversation is to highlight how it's different. It matters way less to me that I can go through the explanations of how Poco is a flagship killer brand. And I figure you can read all of the individual specs on your own. I mean, if you were able to find this video using a web browser, I'm pretty sure you can also pop by GSM Arena. They do great work. Watching Poco pick strategic parts to keep moving forward on affordable 5G options that don't feel like compromised devices just for being a little less expensive. That was kind of a mouthful, but I think we can all agree that's a win for the consumer. New radio standards, nicer screens, and a better performance per watt, punching well above the phone's price tag. So I will of course leave some links down below where you can find more information on the newest slate of Poco smartphones, specifically the X5 Pro 5G. Definitely want to check out some more information on this phone. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely incredible. Those of you who are clicking on links in my descriptions, maybe you're hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or maybe you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams. And I'm trying a few other fun things like trying to revive a Flickr account and I'm spending a lot more time on the Mastodons. That's been a lot of fun. So I will catch you all on the next video.